Podcast. I'm Lily, the twirling tech goddess. I'm black, I dance, I'm queer, and I'm an engineer. Welcome to The Twerk Shop, a show that explicitly encourages radical diversity and inclusion by making the process of learning tech more fun, accessible, and relatable to people underrepresented in STEM. Each week, you'll come along with me as I create something fabulous using cutting edge tools and technologies. Then I'll put it through my patented twirl test to make sure that it's stage ready. That's right, we twirl with our tech because you know what they say, the family that slays together increases their socioeconomic status together. On this episode, we're coming to you live from Building 61 Boulder Library Makerspace. And today we're gonna to be making our own fabric and no, I don't mean designing a pattern for a textile. We're creating our own textile using 3D printed fabric. We'll review what we already know about 3D printing, discuss the various types of 3D printed textiles, and then play with strategies for constructing an actual garment with this material. But first, a little backstory. It's always been the fashion for me. The innovation, the creation, the process of inventing textiles, making garments that are expressions of the future we wanna see. One person that I've been inspired by who is doing the damn thing is Iris Van Herpen. I'm coming for that crown, honey. She is a pioneer in the fashion world, as well as the wearable technology realm, touted as the most avant-garde fashion designer in history. The Dutch Duchess herself, we stand so hard, her collections transport me to another dimension. I know that in order to intern at her fashion house, I have to have a European issued passport. Iris, if you watching this, open up your internship to US citizens, honey or just make a special exception for me, sis. Otherwise, I'll just have to move forward with my plot to marry a tall, long-haired Scandinavian man. Don't test me, I'll do it. I would hit Norway in a hot mother <laughs> minute. <laughs> Seeking asylum! They would never find the body. <laughs> what does that even mean? Iris, hire me. I'm gonna need this internship to graduate, boss. Hashtag lady boss. Comment below if you self-identify as a lady boss. Pause the video. Scroll down and come in below. While you're down there, hit that notification bell next to the subscribe button if you haven't already. I am so serious. Materials. So what is 3D printing? 3D printing is the act of taking a 3D model and printing it out using a 3D printer to create a 3D form. We use this stuff called PLA as the material to print it out. There are other materials that you can use, but we're using PLA in this house. We won't dive too deep into the hardware and software behind 3D printing because we have another video where we do more of that and it's available right here. And I'll also link it in the description. Be sure to click on that if you're starting from the very beginning. First time printers, you'll definitely wanna watch that video. Today, I'm not doing all that. Mostly because we already have a video that goes into greater detail, but also because I'm tired of saying being up all night trying to make these measly ass prints for y'all. This little piece alone took eight hours to print, not to mention her little friend, which I tried to print first, that took hours out of my night and later decided they wanted to shit the bed. Y'all play too much. So if I seem crabby, this is why I need to sleep. So the textiles you see here, the hits and the misses are inspired by two YouTube channels that are unfortunately not run by lady bosses, but they're dope in their own rights. Make Anything and Uncle Jesse. If you're really into 3D printing, be sure to check out their pages. They're both giving major zaddy vibes. It's hella problematic. Get in here close and get a nice look at this fabric. This thing is little as hell. Eight hours, I can never get back. Time is money. It kind of has a resemblance to chain mail. The first time I saw this, it was a little tricky to my eye, but as you can see, this is one single print built up in this interweaving pattern. Roll that beautiful B-roll footage. Each single link starts out as a print of its own, and as the print is built up, it completes itself by locking together. So once the print is finished, you have what appears to be a sheet of interlocking chains. This would have been super handy in our episode where we made our own body armor. You can check that video out right here too. And I'll leave it in the description as well, just in case you didn't see it. Or even if you did, watch it again, because it definitely could use more views. 
I'm gonna plug every video we got in this episode. You got it right. This YouTube algorithm got me fucked up. <laughs> this next textile is something I was really excited about yesterday until I tried this bullshit. This one was suggested by my buddy Nick Brewer who sent me Uncle Jesse's videos. His whole juge was about a 3D printing on top of a porous fabric to make a more realistic dragon scale effect. I got an episode about dragons and dinosaurs too. Go and just watch that one too. When I saw this print on this fabric, I just about died. I thought it was so cool. I'll tell you where I went wrong though. So in his tutorial, Uncle Jesse did say that his instructions are specific to the 3D printing software that he would be using and very explicitly that it might not translate to the program that I would be using called Cura. Yet, I still thought I could do it by myself. In his program, he could enter this piece of code that would freeze the print at the third layer, allowing him to lay the fabric down and then continue the print over top, creating a strong bond between the print and the tool fabric. We got that episode where I made that big dress out of all that tool fabric as well. Go ahead and cue that up too. So first off, my printer comes with a pause function. So I thought I could just pause the print myself, move the table around, then press resume, and it would just go back to where it left off. Wrong. I'm not gonna lie. I also had a nail appointment I had to get to and I was running late. So I didn't have any time for all the shenanigans and tomfoolery. So I just laid the fabric directly on the bill plate and tried to print right on it. From the cell phone footage, you can tell that it was actually working at first, but over time, the print wasn't sticking to the plate because there was just the fabric underneath. So it started shifting around and eventually just shit the bed. Whoops, we live and we learn. But I'm definitely gonna figure out a way to perfect it later and hopefully I can still serve y'all this sickening shoulder or something for the final look of this episode. Now I'm gonna take a break because I need something sweet to eat. I'm about to fall out. It's time for our essentials. To have a successful print, you're gonna need your Elmer's glue to spread that on the build plate. You might also need your masking tape. Some people prefer that to the Elmer's glue. You'll need your PLA, which is the substance to make the print. And then some, some type of device to scrape it up off the build plate. Because once it's complete, it'll be pretty difficult to get it off because of the Elmer's glue that we stuck on there earlier. To turn the chainmail sheet into a garment, you'll wanna print out these little links that allow you to connect the sheets to one another. And for the print that's on top of the fabric, you could use a needle and thread or a hot glue gun or a sewing machine to attach it to a larger garment, like my sweater, as an embellishment or an epaulette. You know, epaulettes are these little shoulder things. Ew, David. I invite you to create your own 3D printed fabrics. Try this thing, try this. Let me know if you accomplish it. This machine here belongs to the Boulder Public Library here at Building 61. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, you may be able to access one at your local makerspace. Please tag us in your inventions and comment down below if you run into any issues along the way. We'd love to hear about your journey. Remember to flex those creative muscles because creativity is the nourishment for innovation. I don't really know if you know or not, but a wearable isn't useful to me unless it is literally keeping me awake all night long. So I'm gonna go get dressed and I'll see you on the runway.
remember, life is a highway, and I want to ride it all night long. This program was made possible with the generous financial support of the Boulder Library Foundation. To learn more and find out how you can get involved and help fund future library programs, visit boulderlibraryfoundation.org today.